Okay, uh, this is Dan Kahn from CNCF. We can go ahead and get started. I want to thank everyone for joining the call today. Um, the first piece I'd uh, like to just spend a second on the status for KubeCon Cloud NativeCon Amsterdam, uh, which is uh, March 30th through April 2nd. Uh, we are um, still planning to hold the conference. And so uh, under the upcoming events, there's a link to this uh, novel uh, coronavirus update. We're um, investing a ton of resources to ensure that we're following uh, best practices as to um, keeping all the attendees and staff uh, safe and um, uh, ensure their well-being. So um, it, it is still possible that this uh, crisis is going to escalate, and um, the Netherlands uh, health authorities might um, ban uh, conferences. Uh, it's a little hard to predict what's going to happen. That that has happened in France. It hasn't happened in the Netherlands yet. Um, so I would just say that we are watching that incredibly closely. And uh, we're certainly cognizant of the risks involved and challenge on planning travel and such. But um, as of uh, now, and, and, and my expectation is that the conference will occur. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing many of you there, uh, not shaking your hand, but we're gonna be uh, popularizing the concept of elbow bumps instead as the uh, official KubeCon Amsterdam greeting. I'll also mention uh, that I personally will be at the Linux Foundation Member Summit in Lake Tahoe um, at, uh, in one week. And um, I hope uh, several of you or many of you will be able to be there as well. And then I will um, be attending the Open Networking and Ed Summit in LA um, with, uh, and then the CNTT meeting is happening the two days directly afterwards. And I'm planning on attending that as well in LA. And so of course, all of that is modulo the, the public health issues and uh, companies and people's ability to travel. And so uh, we are following all of that uh, extremely closely. What I can say is if you do want any more information about Amsterdam, this uh, link that I pasted in to um, the chat window contains all of the up-to-date uh, information and always will. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions on that or uh, hear any comments or such. Um, and then my hope for the call today was that uh, Taylor could give a little bit of an update on the work that his team is doing on beginning to build out the CNF conformance test bed and talking about um, what is working today, where um, the progress has been, um, also some of the documentation that they've created for uh, others to participate and uh, that we could spend 10 or 15 minutes on that. And then um, if Robbie would be willing, I uh, would love to then spend some more time on uh, the CNTT collaboration question. And um, in particular, I have um, a question for Robbie and anyone else from uh, the CNTT that's here, which is just um, looking at these requirements that have been put together um, on the platform side. The um, kind of key question that I'm coming up with is that uh, my assumption is that any um, RA2 platform, or I think it's RI2 is, is the right phrasing, um, is going to be certified Kubernetes. And my belief is that the, the test suite associated with certified Kubernetes hits something like two thirds of these um, requirements that are on here. And, and we could go through and maybe we should even just do a side call and try and lay that out. But um, I'm particularly curious on the question of what about the requirements here that aren't covered by uh, certified Kubernetes? Uh, I, I understand that right now these are um, being implemented as a spec first and that's happening live on GitHub. I, I would sort of ask the question, is there a plan for a test suite associated with it? Who do you see writing that and, and how, um, how do you see it coming about? I, I am familiar with the timeline document, um, but I, I'd, I'd love to see a little more context on that. And then um, related to that and, and sort of the question that I'm getting at, is that um, we're trying to decide with the CNF conformance, does it make sense um, for us to also begin writing some tests on the platform side, uh, or should we keep it to essentially the CNF side? 
Absolutely, that's um, not fine. I, I'm happy to share also one slide uh, on this uh, at the end. Oh, that's great, Rob. So we're going to get to you in about 15 minutes, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Of course. Great. So um, let's just have Tara start, unless anybody uh, had any comments about the uh, coronavirus and KubeCon um, or any other agenda items that you uh, were looking to discuss. Taylor, would you mind um, diving in? Sure. Um, <coughs> Dan, uh, this is Ramki. A uh, quick question. Um, I mean, on travel to KubeCon. So, any updates on the flights? I mean, anything on, like, for example, which airlines is good or bad? Um, any news on that? I mean, that probably could be uh, be as or even more sensitive than actually staying out there in Amsterdam. I feel. I, I mean, all I would say as of right now is that there were some people who were planning to connect via Milan. Um, please don't do that because Milan is in the Lombardy region of uh, Italy, um, and which is uh, re requiring people not to have traveled through for the, the previous 14 days. So uh, you're, you're probably aware that, I mean, U.S. airlines in particular have been canceling a number of flights to Asia, um, Korea, Japan, China and to, uh, Northern Italy. But uh, as of now, uh, there's not been any impact on flights to Amsterdam. So uh, I think all airlines are, are equally good that we'll get you there. Anything else I could add on that? Okay, uh, Taylor, please. Sure, Dan, thanks. So um, I can share my screen a little bit um, here. So this is just in the notes to start. So um, on the CNF conformance initiative, there's I guess three main areas. The highest level for what are we covering and that kind of goes into what Dan was talking about with platform uh, versus application level testing and if we break that down we're going from high level stuff that could potentially go into slides and understanding where it applies uh, the categories and then it goes down further in depth on the documentation towards the tests themselves i'm going to jump into that so if if we go in here then and i've posted some of these into the um, the chat, uh, I'm sorry, in the notes, I can drop a link here in the chat. So here's the readme just to start off of the GitHub repo. And this ties in with the categories which we've been talking about for a while. Um, these go into cloud native principles that we would look for in uh, CNS or cloud native network functions, so compatibility, statelessness, security, and what do those mean? And then these can go further. Um, you can look at, this goes into the actual categories and what type of things we're talking about. So compatibility of CNI plugins, how it uses the Kubernetes API, um, and there's different tools for looking at this, like uh, API Snoop allows us to look at an application's usage of the Kubernetes API from alpha through GA endpoints. And then we break this down on each of these categories. So what are we talking about? Security type test with privilege mode and access to different things. So this is to be able to have an idea of, of what we're looking for. Some of these may overlap, either the tools usage or the test could overlap into different categories but this at least gives an idea of the overall structure. And then the other part, if I can uh, go back here, read me, implementation overview is so to try and uh, provide some of the questions or answers to some of the questions that we've been having. So we're leveraging upstream tools, so mentioning some of that. You can get more of these if you look on some of the other documentation, but like OPA Gatekeeper, um, Helm, the linting tool, prom tool, these different things that we're using upstream for 
building the test and and then what are the what is the actual framework that we're talking about so this goes in a little bit about this the the way that the tests are written trying to make them easy to read and understandable so you can go in and and know what each one of them is uh, actually doing uh, tying right back to those categories and then the testing that we're doing right now has primarily been using the CNF testbed tool chain. And there's some links in here and how that could be leveraged. And this creates Kubernetes clusters on packet using upstream Kubernetes. And the tooling itself is pretty open to supporting other providers if desired. So if you're interested in seeing something else leveraged with the CNF toolbed tool chain, then please open a PR for that. It's not documented here, but we'll have pretty soon just some testing that we've been doing with Kind. So that wouldn't al allow, say, performance testing, but if we're talking about development and being able to contribute um, a lot of the tests or validating functionality, then that should increase uh, the capability to do that. So we'll be adding some documentation for running the conformance suite in kind. That'll be an alternative to actually running it on physical machines with packet. And then you can see the installation here, uh, a few prereqs before you actually get in and you'll be going to skip past some of this. Um, once you're in there, then there's some quick start on access if you have a Kubernetes cluster and you can get right into the first set of tests. Beyond that, we have a, an usage document that goes through testing specific pieces, including the entire categories. So we're trying to make it so if you're focused on one area, maybe security or compatibility, you should be able to run all the tests within there. You can also run specific tests. So continuing to update the documentation across the board. And at this point, I think we're ready for more people to get involved and try to follow the documentation and give feedback on uh, repeatability. So that's one of the main goals that we want. And we've covered quite a bit here as far as from the highest level all the way down to contributing tests and trying them out. Another effort that's um, happening right now is getting a test suite that actually runs each of these tests continually. So we'll have that up soon. And any tests that we add will be running in a CI pipeline. We have, uh, I think, about 10 tests right now that are either in, completed, and ready for, say, uh, they could be run automatically, or they're in uh, peer review QA before they roll out. And the way that we're doing the testing, if you go in here on the project board, there's two main areas. There's a specification if, if we have stuff that we're not ready yet to write tests. We're still trying to figure out what tooling. So there's research on these, including sample CNS. Um, Nikolai from NSM Project's been doing some research on using a prox from OPNFV. We have other tests that are about using upstream tooling. And once we're ready with something that we want to implement that goes over in this project board, you can see there's uh, quite a few to do, and those will keep getting added as they come out of that idea state. And then um, planning out what we expect to see, the input and output of each of those tests, its development, and then you can see there's uh, a good number in progress, and then going through QA and peer review before they uh, get completed and moved over. So if there's anyone that would like to help, um, on any of these, including the idea stage for potentials, then please reach out um, via 
CNCF Slack or uh, via issues on the CNF conformance test. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Uh, would it be possible to, uh, to have a demo maybe next time just to see exactly how the running is that something possible? Um, sure, I, I think that we could uh, get, get a demo together. Are you suggesting, would you like to see like a one-on-one -on -one, or are you wanting maybe for the whole group? Uh, probably the whole group would be useful. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to understand, um, which maybe the, the documentation is not clear to me. So there is, it seems to me, an installation phase for a platform first, right? And then on top of that, you add the test uh, suite on top of that. Is that is that the case? Um, so is the question about um, how it's set up or what test we're, uh, yeah, we're actually uh, being focused on? How the infrastructure is put in place first and how do you deploy your infrastructure? And is that an instruction on the page will show you how to deploy the infrastructure first and then do the testing on top of that or does it assume that you already have a cluster up and running and you have a CNN? Okay. Yeah. So right now, um, most of the documentation for this are going to be either on the README in this installation section or more extensive test after the, after the platform is up is in the, the usage document. We'll probably be moving this over into its own install doc soon. And one of the areas I think that we need to do is have a section for platform setup and the prereq setup before you deploy any application, a CNF that you want to test. So if you have a, we have several sample CNFs that we're going to be using, but if you have a CNF that you want to deploy, there will be a section that's focused on that and then the actual cluster setup. So this installation area here is would be the platform setup and right now um, similar to what i said on the implementation overview this is using the cnf test bed so this is kind of just the overview setting up kubernetes on packet and how do we do that well, we use the the tool chain that's on the cnf test bed that actually i'll click this link the cnf test bed um, documentation actually has um, information on setting that up. So this is reproducing, it's saying the CI environment for seeing a test bed. This walks through actually bringing up a cluster on packet that you can test with. And it talks about uh, the different, there's some differences on machine types or if you wanna do different things like um, I, uh, CPU isolation, there's other things. So this gets a little bit more extensive on the CNF testbed side. On the conformance side, we mainly say you can go use those, you, you can use the tooling and here's the commands to run without getting extensive. But I, I think we'll end up with a section that goes more into this. And one of the alternatives besides packet with a, a Kubernetes deployed to packet will be using kind so that you can use uh, Kubernetes and Docker for doing testing. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you, Taylor. And Tara, could you just spend a minute or two talking about the sample CNFs um, that you're using as you develop the test? I think it's also, uh, if we could spend a, a couple minutes maybe chatting about our um, thoughts right now on, on scoring for bronze, silver, gold, and giving some context about uh, what's involved in getting to gold, I think is, is going to wind up being important for this group. Yes, I have the same, uh, yeah, I have the same question that um, because uh, I guess the, the whole test suite should be um, set up for, for those uh, gold standards, but uh, there's no concrete uh, API definitions for those. So I, I uh, also want to know how to how to um how to check if it complies or not sure
Sure, I, I can go into that. Oh, I'm on the wrong repo here. So, the sample CNS, um, right now, uh, similar to the, the any type of um, goal standards for certification or where the points are, that's still to be determined. So the focus on any samples are to create ones that allow us to, to cover the tests that we're working on right now versus trying to build one or that uh, will complete everything or, or um, validate extensively everything in production. So trying to build up to that and then get feedback on each test. So the idea uh, which we're working on here, uh, you'll see some of these would be, um, th these would go into some sample area. Most of them are gonna be upstream. So this one here that I'm showing on this branch, particular branch is it's using core DNS, so this would just be a layer seven example. If you looked at the VCP use case, um, ONAP and uh, various other projects Im implemented, this would be like VDNS, so it would be one CNS in an entirely use case. So it seemed like a, at least one valid one. We're probably adding others, like we have a serving gateway from an EPC use case we'll be adding. But the idea is to take something ideally upstream and be able to pull in, um, if we have Helm charts with this one, we can reference an upstream. We have, uh, not on this particular uh, branch, but another one would be a, a um, using a, a CNS that has invalid Helm charts or maybe some other pieces. So we're talking about components that could be used in a use case and focusing there. What are the smaller components that we can say, these are the features and how is it implemented? So application that's part of a use case, um, the, the packet gateway or serving gateway or MME from EPC would all be examples that we could put in here. And then the next part is how are they used and this is something where the documentation is here. I think it's actually, um, maybe if I go, some of it, as I pointed out, was here. But we need to update, how do you, how do you um, use a CNF? If you wanna use a CNF to actually test, I think this is something that's partly over in the usage documents and other stuff. But the general idea would be you're going to put your CNS in the CNF directory. There's a, a structure that we're saying you need whatever your Helm chart, whatever other pieces, and there can be some static testing of, of that CNS. And then there's deployment, deployment level runtime tests. And it would go through here and do the static test, deploy it, and then run the runtime test. That's the simplest case. And then what we're would still be in in planning and trying to get feedback on is how, how would we test uh, a CNF that's maybe in a use case or an example. So um, a example of that would be the serving gateway in EPC. So we could say we're testing the serving gateway. Someone else may have developed a, a different vendor, may have developed an MME or some other component this vendor has delivered a new serving gateway, so how do we validate that? There's probably going to have a need for deploying a few other components to test um, the, the serving gateway itself. So that's something that we're still working on, but the first part is how do you isolate and run individual CNS? Does that answer the questions around sample CNFs and kind of what we're thinking before looking at gold, silver, bronze? Yes, so I think uh, so everything is uh, still uh, ongoing that um, because even for the same uh, uh, CNF, we have uh, many different uh, uh, implementations and uh, so maybe we need uh, different test suites for the different implementations to check the same uh, feature 
uh, in uh, maybe the gold uh, standards, something like that. So uh, I, I guess maybe it, it could be very difficult to, to achieve uh, a unified, uh, let's say, uh, test suite to, to, um, to finally achieve this uh, certificate uh, uh, program, I guess. So that's not uh, the way that we had been envisioning it. We were envisioning a single test suite that you can run um, against your CNF that um, the resulting score that that test suite gives you shows you whether your CNF is currently not so great bronze, silver, or gold. Um, so, and then we're presuming that there's going to be a ton of debates about what those scoring ranges should be. Um, but not that not multiple different test suites would be needed. Or, or, or phrased differently, the, the key phrase is suite, where the, we, there are many, many different tests that would need be needed. And Taylor and his team are working hard to leverage a bunch of different upstream tests. But the, what they're doing is combining it all into a single test suite that can be run with a single command. Uh, Taylor, is that a, good, a reasonable summary? Uh, yeah, that, that is. And what I may be hearing in addition to this, and please let me know if, if I was hearing this, there's potentially other test needs that would be out of scope. So I don't think that this test suite is going to try to validate, um, say, an SC standard or maybe a protocol standard that doesn't have to do with um, verifying how the uh, CNF is deployed and maintained in the life cycle. So if we talk about the functionality or implementation of a, a particular application, a CNF, then you could get into details where you need some type of integration standard that could be out of scope. That's probably an endless amount. If you're integrating with any API for lots of different um, services and applications, there could be additional tests. So the focus here is, does, it, does the CNF um, conform to cloud native principles and standards? Can we validate that? And if we look at it from that standpoint, then you should have one test suite that can cover all of that and validate that the CNF is going to behave this way and you're going to get the benefits if it's behaving to these standards. Yes, I understand that we are testing for those uh, principles, but uh, still, uh, if we don't have a, a unified uh, specifications or APIs, something like that, we, we, we I, I think it's very difficult to, to, um, to find a way to cover all the scenarios for a single uh, principle. I mean, because there are many different Im implementations to, to achieve uh, one of those principles. I understand, and, and that's uh, definitely something that we want to look at. So there's, um, say, on a specific category, if we're looking at statelessness, there's many different ways that you could handle not having state saved in a CNS. So how do we test for that without saying we're going to test that the user is using one of, let's say, 100 different implementations? That's probably not the way that we need to go. So then for that one, we're going to look at what are some things to not do. And of course, there could be many. So I would love to get you involved in the conversations around those. And then if we're looking at something and potentially you're seeing an implementation that sh you think should be cloud native, but it wouldn't pass, then that's probably something that we need feedback to say, how can we improve the test or maybe add a new test? Um, so I, I'd, I'd love to get you in, involved in this. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah, Any I, other I would uh, um, <laughs> emphasize that point that um, although we are using these, uh, this core DNS based CNF as an initial uh, guinea pig to, to ensure that the, the tests are passing when we think they should pass and fail when they should be failing, um, the, the real validation is going to be to reach an alpha level 
um, for this uh, CNF conformance test suite and then get uh, the vendors and the operators um, in the space to run it against their own CNFs and to start giving feedback on, oh, this test is too strict or, or doesn't test for the right thing or, or is unrealistic. And uh, then to also begin to help us with some of the scoring questions. So I, I really would emphasize that this, this needs to work in the real world and not, not just theoretically. Yes, of course, uh, I think uh, we need to discuss about that more uh, later. Yes. Okay, well, um, if that if there aren't any other questions for uh, Taylor on it, I, I would love to hand it off to Ravi, um, who can maybe give us just a little bit of an update in, in general on CNTT. Um, and, and feel free to take the screen, Ravi. Thank you, Dan. So I Sorry, I, I had one more comment to make on on that uh, the previous topic, and I'll make it quick. Um, so, a couple a couple things that are very low hanging fruits that we can use to test almost any cloud native application uh, out there is like we can go and we can go kill a pod and see if uh, see if it affects service, or we can try performing an upgrade or a downgrade using the common tooling. And so, there are some very low hanging fruits that we can start with that should cross cut uh, most CNFs. So, uh, and, and I, would, I would expect that some of the things that we start with would, would probably start with some of those, uh, with some of those areas. Uh, anyways, I we don't have anything else to add at this point. Uh, it's a very good discussion, thanks. Uh, sorry guys for breaking, uh, Greg is speaking from OVO. Uh, we are c c quite new in this, in this group. Uh, uh, maybe it was discussed before, sorry for asking that question, question because, uh, Something what I'd like to understand, and uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, we are talking here about telecom uh, services. So it means that we have to handle somehow uh, existing protocols like we have diameter, uh, SIP or, or uh, SS7. And uh, mm, actually uh, this conformance, what I've seen, uh, is related to behavior of component itself but the question is how to uh, confront that with uh, using or, or uh, doing what is designed for uh, so i mean uh, the the, uh, the uh, cnf can be tested yes but the question is that is doing what should do is handling uh, ss7 or diameter traffic correctly uh, did you discuss this this topic before that's a good question. And I, I think that it, it has been discussed uh, to start. And I think that most likely that needs to be split off from talking about uh, is a component cloud native conformant? And then how can you use it? So we can say this application is designed and developed and works in a certain way. And then does the application do what you want in a larger um, sense when you start putting all those components together? I think those are two different things. And whether or not it's part of the CNF conformance suite to say test that as the next part or not would be uh, to be determined. We definitely, I, from the standpoint of any application that's going to work with current standards, then you're, that is going to come up at some point. It's what is covered in this, in this test suite to be determined. Mm -hmm. Okay. Th thanks for asking. Uh, uh, I already discussed this topic to Dan uh, last week uh, because right now I see that uh, maybe it's not the right time for uh, influencing the white paper which uh, you are uh, going to, to release, but uh, I would like to see, if, see uh, the way how legacy protocols will be handled in CNF because Okay, um, so I do I have... I think your audio cut out, but... Can you guys hear me? Go ahead. So, so I think, Greg, uh, actually going back to your point about the functional testing, uh, one of the things that 
uh, I personally try to do and understand in CNTT is where things should be tested and who are going to test them. And just to give you some context, this slide I'm showing in front of you, uh, this, the purpose of that slide was to understand the new uh, verification program launched by LFN. The, the question was what test we need to include in that program and those tests, where they're coming from? And what does CNTT role plays in, in regards to those different uh, testing uh, needs that we need to perform when we talk about containers and containerized platforms? So I get I this slide and where the question mark is, I'm gonna talk you through it in details now, is where I don't have a clear idea about which projects in the industry will cover those aspects. But in essence, what we're trying to do in, in CNTT, trying to understand the relationship with the CNCF conformance test, with OVP phase two and with the other projects existing in the industry. Now, CNTT, as you can see on the screen, if you look at the, 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 the right, so the, the left-hand side of the diagram, we do have the reference implementation, which we talked about maybe in the past, where the intent of that implementation is to create an instance in a given lab where this instance reflecting the specifications we create in CNTT. And that, that kind of information in that document will be specify what are the lab requirements and also it will specify what kind of uh, infrastructure we would like to have in terms of capabilities. And that capabilities could be whether it is networking capabilities or to whether storage capabilities or what kind of capabilities the infrastructure will have to have. And that information, the expectation is to be feeding into a community installer and that community installer, I know Taylor talked about the CNCF testbed and the way that the infrastructure can be installed. And those installers, the idea is to take that information in as an input and the result will be installing the cloud infrastructure into that given lab that is specified and available. And any vendor, if they would like to provide their own cloud platforms, they should be able also to consume that specification and install their cloud platform in that given lab. And that lab could be their own internal lab or it could be packet.net or it could be a community, other, other community labs like OpenFV labs. It does not matter which lab it should be as much as well as, well as, as long as the installer supports that kind of lab infrastructure. Now, the other part that we were looking at in CNTT is the reference certification or reference conformance. The name has been changed lately. And that is really a set of requirements that we say as a community that would like to test against. And that could be a part of the infrastructure testing, but some of it are also the workload testing. And the way we see that is once the infrastructure or the cloud platform is instantiated in a given lab, we'd like to make sure that this cloud platform is compatible or compliant to the CNTT specification we specify in our documentation. And, and that will mean we need some way in the industry in an open source project that will be able to create those test cases for us that we can run against the given cloud platform and determine if the cloud platform is compliant and conformant to the CNTT specification we set. The actual test requirements, what exactly we would like to test against and what exactly we expect to see in the cloud platform will be written and determined and specified in our CNTT reference uh, conformance documentation. And this work stream, the RC2 is being established uh, as we speak. This is still discussion with CNTT to create that working stream within CNTT. But again, that will expect it to give a requirement to the different tooling and testing uh, projects within the community to create those tests and run it against the cloud platform. And this is all from the infrastructure point of view. I'm not talking about workloads or CNFs at this point yet. Now, when, we, when it comes to the CNFs, when we have actual cloud native function that would like to test, I think there are different areas where the testing is needed. One of them is we need to test the orchestration aspect and the manual aspect of this cloud native function. And that includes, for example, has it been packaged in the right way? Does the packaging is compliant to the HC standard or does the package compliant to the Tosca or HEAT or Helm chart or whatever packaging technology that need to be supported. And that's testing is not, I'll call it offline testing because you don't need to run the actual CNF to know if that CNF actually is conformant or not. 
And just to clarify, this is not what, we, what I'm talking about here in this diagram. So that testing will be covered by other projects. In my view, for example, I know ONAB in the LFN, they're doing some testing around containers. And what they test against is the, uh, is the compliance of the packaging against the, 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 the definition that ONAB expect to be onboarded into ONAB. Uh, the other kind of testing is the cloud native principles. Now, this is what I'm uh, really showing in the bottom uh, diagram here. And this is kind of testing against the categories that Taylor uh, highlighted, which is around uh, compatibility, statelessness, security, scalability, observability, uh, and so on and so forth. And, and those are, in my view, are very generic. And those testing does not necessarily care about what infrastructure lie underneath because they're all impacting the actual workloads and how the workload is being designed and how, how the workload is being architected from cloud native principle perspective. Now, there are other aspects of that, that CNTT in my view will be impacting. And this is around resources and hardware consumption. Now, if the, if the container and cloud native function is being designed to take advantage of, let's say acceleration capabilities from the infrastructure, and that acceleration capabilities was not specified in CNTT as prohibited acceleration to be consumed. Just an example, I'm not saying we prohibiting, I'm just saying if we have any restriction in CNTT to on the way that uh, a given acceleration resources is consumed or, or how it should be consumed, this is where I feel the CNF conformance test and the testing that they do specifically around hardware resources and scheduling will be impacted is to kind of support those test cases. So in, in my view, CNCF conformance test has two important points. One of them is very generic to any cloud infrastructure. And the other one is maybe some requirements coming from CNTT to specify, we have this own specific requirement from the infrastructure and we would like you please to test against those. So that would be a subset of test cases that just to cover the requirement for CNTT. Now this is, in my view, still workload testing. Now the other testing that I feel is still need to be covered, which is I want mentioning here in the diagram. Let me see if I can use the marker. Uh, I don't know if I can use that. But this box here that says uh, community tools and test for CNF, in my view, this is where also another area where I don't know exactly who's going to do this testing. But going back to Greg's uh, point from OVO that sometimes when we talk about performance testing, when we talk about runtime testing, how the actual CNF is consuming that is the hardware, does it use uh, the API that we allow it to use or does it use uh, what kind of uh, networking does it uh, expect and how does it consume that networking from the infrastructure point of view? And addition to that, how does it perform? And to know how does the CNF perform, we need to understand and have better understanding of the category of that CNF. What functionality does it perform, does it do in order to, for us to understand how do we test that uh, CNF? So for me, this is a much bigger question. And this is the hardest one, at least in my view, because there's a lot of information we need to know from the CNF itself, what functionality it performs before we can actually do, do this testing. But other aspect of this testing is still possible because if the CNF is consuming, let's say storage using a specific API and that API is not being determined and specified in, in CNTT, then we should be able to uh, test against the uh, API or the interface. Again, interface is, is another topic that also, in my view, we need to be able to test against. Uh, does the CNF use, uh, for example, MIMF interface or AFXDB interface to consume the infrastructure? And this is kind of, uh, we need also to find information around uh, how to test around those interfaces and APIs. So- Probably, I appreciate that yeah. overview. I, I didn't totally get the, the very specific piece of information I'm looking for, which is the the testing for RI2, that the, the test development hasn't begun yet, has it? No, it's not begun yet. Okay, and so you're envisioning that first the um, RI2 would be finalized, and then are you envisioning that there will be software tests for it, or is it that a, um, like a certification provider, a company would go through each thing at a time and just manually confirm that you can create storage, that you can do networking, that sort of thing. No, so the, the expectation is that the RC work will start uh, as soon as possible in the okay. entity once the work storm is established. And that will be a list of test cases that we need to see implemented to test against CNTT specifications. 
Now, some of those testing, as I mentioned, we would like ideally to understand how that relates to the CNCF conformance test that you guys are doing. And potentially, uh, depends on the discussion we're having, that those requirements can be included in the CNCF conformance test, or we need to find other ways of creating those test cases uh, to be able to start using them against a given workload or against the infrastructure. Um, okay, so that doesn't, I mean, we are considering now adding this function, adding an additional set of tests into the CNF conformance test suite that would um, potentially then be able to satisfy some of the needs of the RC2 work. Okay, yeah, good. It's, it sounds like there's, um, so the two main areas that I'm hearing are a platform and then application. And then if, if you look at each of those, for the platform, there's probably a lot that could be generalized similar to the current principles uh, CNF application tests that are happening in the conformance. And those, ideally we could look at what's missing from stuff like the Sonoboy Kubernetes conformance that wouldn't cover it. Um, what other things that we wanna look at? So these are general uh, tests. And then you have the specific tests that you're caring about um, for what, whatever different reasons. So one of them would be, does, is an EPC, does it have to implement in a way that conforms to standards for integrating? So if, if you're saying you want to support SIP or um, some other um, interface or something, those set of tests, if we can say these can be grouped and, and what are they trying to accomplish, then I think it may be easier to determine if that should be its own separate test suite or if it should be a subset, if, if we have those uh, split out. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So uh, one question, Taylor, uh, that I want to understand, which is not clear to me. So are we saying that the CNF conformance test will cover platform testing? I think that's to be determined. Okay. And that's something that we want to look at. What is, what are we wanting to test platform wise? So that could be trying to figure out if, if we say um, what, what's desired for the RC2? What are, what are you looking at for uh, a telecom platform? And then trying to split that between here's things that are protocol or integration specific to they're in implementation. So you may get rid of the MMA and have something. There could be a, an APC could be implemented completely different and not have any of the current components at some point in the future. So it's really, what do we want right now though? So right now you do need integrations because those are out there and you have these parts that you expect. The platform should work with existing. So if we can figure out what that is at a container platform level, the difference between a specific thing like supporting an APC and then what's not specific. So, then so we could see, oh, it's needed. So if, if we if we park the APC discussion for a moment, because I think this is really yeah. a, a long shot and, and long term. If we say uh, there's two kinds of testing, right? There's workload testing and there is platform testing. Now in the workload testing, they also uh, I agree. I think you already covered the cloud nativeness of that workload. That's not necessarily CNTT specific, but there might be and there will be some requirement coming from CNTT that we expect the workload to comply to. And that's around resource consumption, for example, and around interface and APIs towards the infrastructure. So if you, how do you consume the infrastructure? And those are where I see more requirements coming from CNTT towards the, the workload testing. Now, the other aspect is the platform testing. Now, how that platform is really being implemented, what kind of uh, plugins it uses, what kind of protocol it supports, and so on. That's also some of that requirements will come from CNTT. And if I hear you correctly, what you're saying is we need to look at the RC2 when it's being created and see which ones will fit into workload and what this more test cases we need to implement to support them and what goes into the platform testing and what workload, what, sorry, what this case is we need to create for those platform specific uh, requirements. 
Uh, yes. Uh, the For the workload, I think we're covered on what we're doing for cloud native workload testing. And of course, there can be any number of workload testing beyond cloud native to support that. We need to do the same thing for the platform. So what parts of the platform testing should be about cloud native um, conformance versus which ones are, I don't want to say vendor, but whatever you would call the other parts so that, that are non, they're non-generic. These are things that must be met to fit existing standards. Okay, then, then what are those? So if we can split that up and come up with um, a set of, of tests that we want to look at for the platform, then we can then look at existing tests. Like, okay, does the CNI conformance and Kubernetes um, certification, do those cover those? If they don't, can we contribute? and get those updated? Or do we need something in addition? Maybe the CNF conformance that um, we add a set of platform tests. We don't want to start down that, that road of, of adding platform tests um, and saying it's going to be official until we decide if there's something else that already meets it. So you expect this box here to be covered by the CNF conformance test and that will have the cloud native principle testing as well as any extra requirement that the entity might need. But this is something still to be determined, I believe. It, it could be that that could, what you have there on the screen, the CNF conformance, we could have a set of platform tests hmm. where we may say it's better to contribute to the Sonoboy test for Kubernetes, maybe extend and have stuff with um, the CNI con, um, conformance testing for the spec, the CNI spec. We we need to determine what's needed on where that new box is that you created, and then decide on where the testing should be. I okay. do think that there should be a separation between is this cloud native on the platform and is this cloud native on the workload versus. Does okay, it is cloud native. You've developed a CNF in a cloud native way. Well, can you actually use it following other standards? Those other standards should be tested, and I think we should de determine where those should be tested, which may may or may not be part of this uh, CNF conformance. It could be another set of tests. Yeah, understood. Thanks. I think CNTT is going to care about the, an aggregation of tests from, that are covering many specific areas. When you're looking at what is going to work for a telecom, you're going to care that it, it covers many different tests. And if we're focused in each of those categories, then I think we'll have um, more confidence in the results of each. Yeah, sound good. Agree. All right, we're at the top of the yeah, hour. I, I think we should stop there, but uh, Robbie, we do look forward to continuing this conversation. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate everyone's time today. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. Cheers.